Hey guys, I've been sick all last week, so I'm really happy it's online class, and here's me in my model in uh, my home office. So um, I got your submissions for week two, and got a chance to look at some tables and um, your drawings. By the way, all drawings are great. Submitted uh, any. Uh, way you can you can email it you can scan and once again email it you can post it on blackboard you can post it on facebook whatever um, because it's this course is about genetics technology is uh, here and i would like to use more of that and just to communicate with you because i like teaching in a classroom and i like seeing all of you guys and i like like talking with you guys <coughs> mm. All right. Well, I uh, from your survey, I know that 80% of you are here for the fun, for expanding your knowledge. This class is not mandatory for you. Uh, you just uh, taking it uh, because it's interesting. And let's go from here. So uh, the other. Uh, think um, in common for most the majority of the students taking the survey is that we are all afraid of technology. What happens if we cannot upload the file or if we cannot take a picture or a video? Uh, don't worry about it. Tell me what is not working. Um, and if it's technology falls, there are so extensions and so on. Because I'm also learning the technology with you, and some stuff on the updated blackboard just doesn't work for me. Um, but I would like to see how far we can go with technology. All right, let's look at our cell model. So drawing a cell is simple. First, you choose a big, big circle, and this is plasma membrane. A plasma membrane is a cell border. It's a fat film. Every cell is like droplet of fat. Not really fat, but it looks like because plasma membrane is made of um, lipids or fats. But inside of the cell is water with some salts dissolved in it and proteins, and it's called cytoplasm. Cytoplasm is everything except the nucleus. And cytoplasm cannot give cell its shape, so we need cytoskeleton, which are proteins, fibrils, and rods, and something that is made of protein, which lay down a system of support for the cell for it to have a certain shape. Uh, when um, I was working for research, I was studying some cytoskeleton mutations, and we were using Drosophila melanogaster fruit fly. So uh, certain changes in cytoskeleton uh, will make those teeny tiny hair of Drosophila grow in different directions rather than being pointed into one direction. So the question is why all of a sudden we are interested in those hairs on Drosophila fruit fly? Just because the same gene, uh, similar to this one that I was studying in Drosophila, it creates um, abnormalities in humans. Kids are born with very short legs and arms and usually die on a six, um, on a six months of their life. So we are using the Drosophila uh, model to study the interaction of the genes, uh, the gene interactions that could be used for predicting um, human models. Well, anyway, cytoskeleton, a system of rods, of protein rods, myofibrils, and so on that gives the cell its shape. 
Now, DNA is housed in the nucleus, the big white thing right here. And DNA never leaves the nucleus. Now, uh, you are your proteins. You are not your DNA. You are your proteins. Because the, hi uh, the color of your eyes are your proteins. The color of your hair are your proteins. Your behavioral reactions are your proteins interacting. And DNA is just instructions how to build proteins. Proteins are built outside of the nucleus. Uh, these little dots positioned on rough endoplasmic reticulum are called ribosomes. So rough endoplasmic reticulum in particular and rough endoplasmic reticulum in general is just a system of roads that run through the whole cell where ribosomes dump their newly synthesized proteins so they can go to Golgi apparatus for modification, packaging, uh, being packaged into the vesicles, protein vehicles, and delivered to any place of the cell. Uh, there are two kinds of endoplasmic reticulum. We are talking about rough, which is studded with ribosomes, and that's why it's called rough, because if you try to pet it, it feels rough. Now we have smooth parts of the endoplasmic reticulum. Uh, there's no, there are no ribosomes in here, and that's why it's smooth. This part of endoplasmic reticulum synthesizes lipids and fats. Uh, actually, uh, lipids uh, is a fancy name for fats to replace the worn out um, parts of the plasma membrane as well as uh, covering the other lipid necessities in the cell. <coughs> All right, so endoplasmic reticulum studded with ribosomes, rough and smooth. Golgi apparatus that receives all the proteins synthesized uh, packages those proteins into vesicles and sends ships them out either inside of the cell or outside of the cell. For example, insulin is a protein that has to leave the cell and go to the bloodstream to manage our glucose content. Uh, the other thing that you see here is mitochondria. Mitochondria is a power station of the cell. So it works on carbohydrates and fats. First, of course, carbohydrates. We all like sweets. That's why, because our mitochondria like sweets, easy fuel for, for it. Then, <coughs> if you exercise long enough, your fats start going to mitochondria. Proteins almost never get there. So protein energy bar is misleading. Proteins could be used to build your muscles, but not provide energy. The only time proteins can provide energy for the cell it's when the cell ran out of the glucose, carbohydrates, uh, ran out of fats, and now you are wasting your muscles. It's a famine. So last chance to survive. Proteins go into mitochondria. Mitochondria is your longevity organelle. If it produces too much of free radicals, remember it's a power station here, it sucks energy out of the chemical bonds of glucose and fats and lipids and takes this energy and deposits it into energy carrier of the cell called ATP. And um, the leftovers of glucose and fats are kicked out of the cell as carbon dioxide. Okay, that's what is left of your glucose and fats, carbon dioxide. 
that you breathe out. Um, so antioxidants that you eat, like blueberries, um, is to uh, catch the uh, are to catch those free radicals coming from mitochondria. But in reality, peroxisomes that are located near mitochondria do a really good job. So if this system functioning great for you, you're going to live long, 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 long years. If it's not, well, have fun, at least. Um, one of the last organelles is lysosome. But I think I'm going to talk about it in part two. This is my second try for part one, because part one, number one, didn't get recorded. So, okay, cell. So, um, in the end, I would like to see on your diagrams, um, nucleus, maybe nucleolus, it's in the part two, and the plasmic reticulum, rough, with the dots of ribosomes on it, and smooth, like without the dots of the ribosomes on it. I would like to see mitochondria, which is power station of the cell. I would like to see peroxisome and lysosome. Plasma membrane, cytoskeleton, and maybe centriole. This centriole is an organelle that is used only during cell division, so it's kind of resting all other times. All right, um, tell me if you like my video. Yes, I know I speak with an accent and it's, it's, it's tough right now when I'm sick uh, in addition to the accent. Um, so, uh, all, uh, all your comments about videos or my presenting, this is a new activity for me. Uh, I feel better in the classroom. So uh, let me know what you like and what you don't like. Like, for example, speak slowly, speak, um, g give more details, uh, provide um, the closed captions. So please do, don't hesitate. Let me know what's wrong. I will work in this semester to make it better. Once again, it's the first time uh, that uh, I am providing this recorded instructions uh, because I, um, I kind of was afraid that my accent is going to throw you off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but we are in this together. I'll help you. You help me to be better teacher. I help you to <laughs> submit to understand the genetics better. Submit everything on time. Okay. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>